It's not my real birthday. Monday is my real birthday. But I won't be here on Monday because it's my real birthday. Jeannie says, no way is Anne working on Monday. No, actually, Anne is nice enough that Reaper took care of it. But anyway, hello and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips. This is Anne, your host with disembodied hands, Justin, John, Quindy, and anybody else really who wants to join in. Yes, it's happy almost birthday. Yes, that is the correct, correct terminology. Yes, you are right. Indeed, sorry for late today. It's like, eh. it's like the day David's parents arrived later today. So we stayed up late cleaning the house because, you know, like you do. And uh, yeah, and then I didn't sleep very well. So definitely laid off the foot today, but I'm here. Yay. And we do have to cap this stream at 11. So I'm happy that I go over all the time because I've banked up hours. <laughs> so this will be a little bit shorter. Um, we're going to do Jeannie today. Jeannie. I figured maybe we'd uh, finish up her lamp and do her base a bit. Let me see if I've got a block. When I'm painting her base, I definitely want to have her on something. And she is the size where this medium-sized block, I think it's an inch and a half block. Oh, I got some goopy. Probably need to re-goop all of my uh, poster putty, actually. This is a mixture of like a light gray and blue poster putty, so it's like... Plus it's dingy because it's old. They cha it changes colors, poster putty, as you use it. So, like, this is what you stick stick things onto. You can also use double-sided tape. I never liked double-sided tape because just, like, I felt like the adhesion. I couldn't curl up the edges. I like to kind of curl up the edges of my putty to kind of encase the edge of the base to give it a little more stability. And you can't do that with double-sided tape. So that's, like, the only reason I don't use it. Double-sided tape, perfectly valid. Although it's a little less reusable also. Yes, that's correct. She's on a narrow oval because... Reaper essentially wants enough of a base so the model is is stable, but not not over base. Because when it's in metal, you know, any extra base is lit really just extra cost for you, the consumer. So better if. And I think it, the sculptors have just gotten into the habit then of not over basing a model, no matter what it's due to come out on. It's not till Monday, Crowley. You can all wish me happy, happy, accomplished my birthday on uh, Tuesday, as I will be back on Tuesday. David's parents will not be gone by Tuesday, but he's he's got to field the parental units that day. I'm not going to help him. It's all him. So I'm pressing the model very firmly down into the poster putty. And then if I've got some extra little poster putty around the edges, I'll kind of curl it up onto the base a little bit. That helps to hold the model. You're giving it some side stickiness as well as some uh, bottom stickiness at that point. So just a little bit to give it a little feet, little little bracket to sit in really. Um, and that way you can get your bottle situated. And hopefully, even though I just stuck this onto the space, hopefully this will be good enough to hold her in place while we work on her today. And it is pretty okay. The problem with the only problem with the wooden blocks is that they're not heavy enough by themselves to keep the model from flopping onto itself. Um, so you probably want to use an additional little cushion of some sort to keep your model from kind of dinging itself against your tabletop or your work surface. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, so let's get, we're, we were doing NMM with purples. Because why not? Let's see here. That's right, I was using um, Runic Purple and Brown Liner as my... Uh, shadow for this. So let's get that going on. Good morning, Julie, with or without Bob. He'd be within his rights to be snoozing. It's uh, really hot here. Or it's going to be another really hot day here. They were hoping it would get a little less hot, but I don't think so. It's already, like, over 75. And it's, uh, here it's 946, so when you're already 
getting uh, closer to 80. And it's not even 10 a.m. yet. You know it's going to be a hot day. Yeah. I don't like the washers, Pedrick. I mean, it's not a problem. I'd rather just use the bubble wrap. It's just a downside of these. Like, I like the cube's bottom surface. I think it's pretty stable. I don't want to glue anything to it to upset that, really. And I don't keep washers on hand. Like, it's not a trick that I use, really, a lot. So, yes, that's totally a fix. You could do it. Um, I just, yeah, yeah. I'd rather just use my bubble wrap. She gets a pillow. She gets a pillow. But, yes, you could totally just do that if you want to. There are all sorts of ways to fix the problem. It's just I liked people to know out the gate. This is uh, the only problem with them is that since they don't, they lack weight, they won't hold the model as well as some other things that you can fill with pennies and stuff or washers or whatever. Bad minis that you want to punish. Hmm, I need a little more brown in that. Yep, yep, that's when you know it's going to be hot. I like hot, but... David said his parents have been living in the Seattle area for like 40 years, so they are used to much cooler temperatures. They're definitely going to get their dose of summer coming here this weekend. Alright, so there's that, and then I was using... Uh... Lantern yellow with a little runic purple in it to make that orange color. We're doing weird colors on this NMM because I wanted to keep it kind of surreal. Not like other NMM. Yeah, I've never glued washers out of the bottom of my figures. Like, there have been times when I, if the base is... Like, if I can put essentially glue a penny to the bottom of it, I'll do that. But I never did a lot of armies where I cared um, about the weight. And weight, unlike, unlike some people who really like the weight of metal minis, so they kind of compensate on plastic minis or resin minis by putting those washers on to give it that weight feel, I never really cared about it. So the weight has never mattered much to me. It's the quality of the cast that matters more to me. All right, so let me just engineer these colors here. Let's actually get Jeannie down a bit. We can move her over, and so you can see the palette. There we are. 90. Yeah, I like my wood blocks, but I don't want to glue anything to them. I like them as is, because if I wanted to, like, transition the wood block and paint it black and make it a competition, like, plinth, then the, the washers would just be honestly cumbersome and ugly, and so I just don't do it. Uh, but that is my own idiosyncrasy, and y'all should totally do you. And if you like using washers to weight your bases, do it. All the washers. You More washers for you. Yeah, it's gonna be warm today, very warm. Alrighty, got some nice yellows coming up here for our gold. Gonna grab just a little bit of that and mix it into here to give it a little deeper color. And then we're going to do a mix and add some white and we'll be set to go. Cause this is a very small lamp and it doesn't need a lot. Yeah, if the mini holder was hollow, I would I would be fine with washers, assuming I had washers, which I don't. <laughs> so I have uh, I have a bunch of pennies in my Red Bull um, miniature holder. But these days, I just don't mind it. I just use my uh, use my bubble wrap to cushion the mini if I need to, since I keep that right on hand. Make our highlight color here, which I'm going to try with two drops of NMM Gold Highlight. 
One drop of lantern yellow and three drops of pure white. The lantern yellow is in there because I like a brighter yellow highlight on gold. Especially this gold. And I think I want this color a little lighter, so I'm actually going to mix, after I mix that up with my brush, I'm just going to use my brush to remix this one. It's going to make it a little, uh, a little paler so that it's a nicer transition here between these three colors. I could even take my brush now and mix it into here, which would add just a tiny bit of white and give it a little more opacity and bring all these colors again closer together. Yeah, waiting in the block. Hello, 40 year old painter. How's it going? Let's get this going on. Uh, we need our pure white, of course. So I'll just finish up these uh, these little bits of gold that didn't get done. She is almost finished. Then she go and go in the box with the others to go to Ron. And Ron will decide if he likes her enough. She, if nothing else, she can go in the gallery and sit on a shelf. Even if she's not used as an example in the store. Because she does, she lacks the sword. Since I chose to not put the sword on her. She's not a good sales example. I mentioned that briefly before. But if you ever do paint for a company. It's best if you don't do any extreme basing. Or, um, or make conversions. Because if the company is using your paint job to sell the model. When you've got something on the paint job that is not actually coming with the model or something on the model that the, you have omitted, it's going to really confuse the consumer. And that's why I try never to do that. Some companies, you know, say that they're okay with that. Like some of them are okay, but it, I do know that, you know, people do get, get confused for, with this stuff. Like anybody looking at my model in a store is going to be like, well, where does the sword go? Right? So that's going to add an additional level of confusion. So if you do paint for a company, keep that in mind. It's usually best if you keep it stock. Here, I wasn't originally intending to give this one to Ron. So I went up, off from that now, but that means that it's less valuable. Yeah, everybody's getting very, very heat wave. I'm okay. Uh, today is like the start of a longer weekend, but my birthday is Monday, 40-year-old painter, so it's uh, it's an okay. It's an okay weekend. It's, it's the parental visit weekend, though, so that's why I'm not looking forward to it as much as I might. Just because it's going to be kind of that. And I have not met David's parents in person before, so we shall see how it goes. So I'm going to kind of uh, paint a lot of my orangey color, which is a shadow color, on this. And that lets me bring the highlights up a little bit more. So I'm almost base coating with the shadow on this one, which I would normally do, if you remember, when I usually use uh, rich leather. I think I do want to get some more runic purple out, though, to use as an even heavier shadow. But it's like, Pendrake, that doesn't matter. Like, in a, in a store, like, putting it on your website sense, that doesn't matter. Like, it could be a great paint job, sure, but it's still going to cause consumer confusion. Um, and you never want that. Like, you don't want people to be confused about stuff. That's not the purpose of a gallery model. Think about all the times you go to the Reaper, like, store or, you know, to look at the model to figure out what something on the model is or how something should fit on the model. So if you did that, if you weren't sure where the, how the sword was supposed to go, and then you went to look at the gallery and this was the only model that you could see, then that's kind of annoying. I'm not in trouble with the parents. I just haven't, like, met them in person. Like, I am seldom in trouble. I'm usually an exemplary human being. But, um, you know, it's just it's somebody else's mom and dad that you don't know all that well. And you have to spend four days with them.
also keep in mind, like, David is younger than I am. I have been previously married. You know, there's all sorts of, like, you know, pitfalls. Potential pitfalls with the parent visitation. Even if you like them, and I do like them so far from what I've talked to them. But it's like, you always wonder, like, are you, like, are you, are you measuring up to what they wanted for their kid, right? Like, I guess, I guess maybe that's just me and my past trauma on this subject. Oh, your parents like bug gloves more than they like you. That's the best way, actually, to go like that. Honestly, you know, because your parents are stuck with you. So who cares if they like you? <laughs> But, uh, um, but yeah, if they, if they like your significant other more than you, that's actually, I think that's the best thing. Oh no, I'll do fine, 40 year old painter. However, do keep in mind, you have to be practical about these things. I am very practical about them. I, I have been in a family where I was not really thought to be uh, good enough for the person I was with. So I am very conscious that such things can happen. I'm always pleasant. And I'm not nervous about it. But it's not a relaxed situation, if you know what I mean. It's not a relaxing weekend. Do you get it? It's like, it's definitely not a relaxing weekend. It's a try hard weekend. How about that? It's like, it's like you can play your favorite video game, but you have to try hard through the whole thing for four days. <laughs> That's what it is. No, I don't give in to like negative self-talk. Like that's not it. But when you have direct experience, you understand. You're like, all right, how's this going to be? Like, there's, there's negative self-talk and there's practicality. Yeah, exactly. But I hate the sword, Pendrake. <laughs> not, not having to paint the sword made this model infinitely better for me. So if you want to do that, by all means you do it, but I'm not. I'm, that thing, it's amazing that I haven't pitched it yet. That sword. I just don't like it very much. I, I reserve the right, much as I love Bobby Jackson and much as I love Izzy's designs, I reserve the right to just not like some things on models sometimes. So now we're going to bring in some highlights. And mostly I've shaded around. I've introduced some dark shadows. Let's get closer. Ah, it's a tiny little lamp. Tiny little lamp. Will you get in focus? Good. Yay. Good tiny little lamp. And mostly, mostly when you're dealing with little NMM, you're just trying to get the basics down, which is to say you are trying to get highlight, shadow, and reflection if you can. I just don't like the design, Crowley. I don't know how to explain it to you. It's very curvy. It's not very sword-like. I mean, it fits her. I just don't like it. Sometimes when you look at a piece of art, you just don't like it. And you have a hard time saying, like, why you don't like it. But you just don't. Does not make it less valid. So what I'm doing now is remember to make something look shiny. You need to have your highlight right up against your shadow. So I'm bringing in this lighter yellow highlight right up against that shadow on the underside of the spout. And also up the bringing up this highlight a bit on right up to the shadow down here. I'm going to be doing the, I kind of simplified the top two bits. So I'm going to actually tone those down just a little bit. You can simplify to a point, but Yeah, I like this model a lot. I just, uh, I'm just not a fan of the swords, so. 
like I said, I was painting it just for to paint it, and I thought Rhonda was doing the uh, studio model, so because she got the original resin, I had like one of the copies. Um, so I pretty much just set out to paint her how I wanted to paint her. But then I realized that we never really got um, a studio model of it because Rhonda got buried and has a lot of stuff to paint. So now I'm like, well, maybe Ron wants it after all, but it's not, it's still not an ideal. So I always give you guys best practices on here, in my opinion, when I give you advice on that sort of thing. Like if you paint for a company, try to keep it stock. In general, that's the kind of advice that just isn't going to get you into trouble. And you can always choose to ignore it. And some companies honestly won't care if it's a cool model. So in the end, it's always, you know, your choice and the company's call. So, all right. So bringing up again, that highlight there, I'm trying to bring up this highlight in a rounded shape because this part of the teapot, if you look at it is a rounded shape. It's kind of a half circle, um, with the cutoff here. So when you keep that highlight going, try to make that highlight the same shape as the surface, it will emphasize the roundness of the model of this like little teapot and it won't make it, it won't look flat. Just Sandy, I think. She needs to be kind of desert. Aladdin. Arabian Nights. Probably just going to use desert sand and use it for a cobblestone effect. There are models that I'm inspired on for the basing, and there are models that I am not inspired on for the basing, and she's one where I was never really inspired. Do need to figure out what we're going to work on next. We might work on an ogre next for our monster slot, our humanoid monster slot. So I'm adding little touches of white to the teapot handle. I might, might have gone a little bit overboard on those, so I'm going to yellow a couple of them out just a tad. There we go. NMM gold is always a balance between how much of the surface you take in a shadow and how much you keep yellow and how big your highlights get. And um, with a burnished surface like this, because I don't envision this as a very shiny teapot, then you get a lot of kind of bigger, broader highlights that kind of blend in. It's a teapot. It's an oil lamp. It's a whatever. Hmm. It looks like a teapot, so I'm just going to do teapot. Maybe she got trapped in a teapot instead of a lamp. I mean, probably better for her. Like, you know, surrounded by tasty tea is probably a better way to go. Speaking of which, I did not finish my tea because I was in such a hurry this morning, so I'm totally going to take a drink of my tea for a second. It does look like a teapot, though. David got a new mug for swag from his company. Um, and it's definitely like a keep it hot kind of uh, mug. So I have adopted it because it lets me actually bring my tea to the stream. Whereas he doesn't ever use it. He just has coffee. So he, ne he doesn't need a, a tea mug that keeps things hot. But I totally can use one. Well, yeah, I get it, Pendrake. But I can call it a teapot. I think it's funnier to call it a teapot. <laughs> I mean, I read a lot. I, the Arabian Nights is one of my favorite, like, books, okay? So I do understand that it is actually a lamp, but it looks like a teapot, so I'm totally calling it that. When I mix my darker shadows here, I'm taking some runic purple, some of my brown liner and runic shadow, and then mixing it with my uh, kind of my brownish orange shadow here, just on the brush 
to bring in a little bit of a darker shadow. Don't know if I like the placement of that. That little lip down there is uh, problematic. So I'm going to knock it down just a little bit and blend it in. Totally a teapot. She strikes me as a, as a jasmine oolong um, drinker. What do you guys think? I don't think she's into green tea. She strikes me as uh, needing, wanting a little bit more caffeination than that. Was the proper tea temperature, right? Instead of rubbing it, people are sitting there and rubbing it and going, this is a bum, you know, this is a bum artifact. There's no genie in this. Then somebody thinks to like heat tea in the, in the, in the uh, pot and suddenly you get a genie. Who complains about the quality of your tea and the flavor? and insists you get a different brand before they grant you a wish. So kind of like this, where we're shading our purple with, or our yellow with purple, Valandar. That's a fun idea about the accent altering, but brutal for the GM. Unless you have an, an actor for a GM. And most of us don't. All right, so I'm kind of liking that. That's, that's looking okay. We don't have our under reflection yet, so I'm gonna Lock in a little bit of one under here. You never want your under reflection to be as light as your normal highlight. Here it's just going to be light reflected from the base onto the bottom of your teapot slash oil lamp. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's a good experiment. I'm glad you like the results. Doing that can give you a lot of visual interest. It's less realistic, but it's um, it can be really, really uh, interesting to look at, like really liven up the model. There we go. We've got a little bit of a, a bit of light down there now. It's a simple little lamp. And I'm going to bring it up, not not to white, not to the same level down here, but I'm going to bring it up to my NMM Gold Highlight Mix. And then I want to make sure that I pop white in all of the places. Gonna get a little tiny little sharp highlight on those top parts. You have to have the pure white, remember guys. Or something really close to it. Then we still need a pure white highlight on this nozzle. Or the spout. Or the whatever you want to call that part of the A lamp. Blend it in a little bit. Because I'm doing a more burnished surface, you definitely blend in your spot highlight when you have room to do so. If you just do a spot and you don't blend it in, that's going to give the appearance of a wet surface or an extremely shiny surface. But then you have to be consistent about the way you spot highlight through the whole thing. That may not be practical for you if you're not very good at NMM yet.
Yeah, I think my placement's a little off down here. I'm going to correct these. Ooh, National Sushi Day. That sounds awesome. Maybe I should treat myself for lunch. Go down and get my, uh, my Poke Bowl. That's a great idea. Although I am going to get a lot of seafood this weekend because we're going to a lot of seafood restaurants. And my Japanese, the Japanese restaurant that we're trying out for my birthday. Happy pre-birthday, Dogfather. Happy birthday is Monday. So you can wish me a happy birthday accomplished on Tuesday. Alright, so that looks pretty good. That's a pretty shiny little lamp. I like that. So now it's time to do the shiny little lamp on the other side. And then touch up some of the gold over here that we uh, haven't done, like the bottom of our scarf. So we'll bring in our dark shadow a little bit heavier down here. Probably mix a little bit of our purple into that to make it even a little bit darker. Remember to put in that shadow on the underside of the nozzle here. The spout. You definitely want that. Shadows uh, often suggest volume. I mean, highlights do too, but the, the shadow suggests the weight of an object. The weight and the shape are often heavily influenced, like visually, by the shadow, how you paint the shadows. Just mixing up that brown color, which is a little bit brown liner, a little bit runic purple, and a little bit of my shadow color that I mixed with runic purple plus lantern yellow. Gives us kind of our, our darker brown color. Except for places like the middle of that spout, or the handle rather, where I do want an actual shadow color, so I go very dark with that. And on the other side, I also brought that line in to separate the spout from the body of the lamp to kind of bring out that detail. Yeah, pretty soon we'll be done with her. Pretty soon. I, I have a couple of like humanoid monsters in the queue. I think there's an ogre, a big ogre I was looking at. They were out of him in Bones Black or Bones, so I ended up getting the metal, but... Yeah, I think a lot of people have painted this one. She's been out for a while, but I hadn't, uh... 
We haven't done her or the Efreet on stream. I'm not really interested in the Efreet. Maybe someday. I have a copy of the Efreet if I want to do it. But... I'll have to be in the mood. So now we're starting to create that rounded highlight on the body of the lamp so that we can... Slash teapot so that we can uh, continue to suggest the shape. If you just do a line highlight here, it's going to lose the ra you lose the roundness of the surface. Yeah, they're both good. I mean, I would dare say that the Reaper isn't putting out stuff that's not good these days. Um, it's just, you know, what in, what is inspiring at the time, right? So, setting in some highlight, rough highlights here on the handle. Pop some highlights onto the base as well. Is that the huge one with all the little miniatures on him? There's a dragon I really like on Etsy, but I officially decided not to... Um, Not to buy miniatures for my birthday because I bought hiking boots and uh, hiking pants and stuff instead. And also I bought myself uh, the Flavor Bible book, which I'm really looking forward to experimenting with. Ooh, I got kaffir lime leaves too this morning in the mail. So I can't wait to do some Thai cooking now. I still need my Thai basil to grow faster, but I can use regular basil if I have to. It's just not preferable. Little highlights there to bring out those little details on the lamp. Yeah, that looks like a huge project, that genie. He's he's impressive. Like, you know that's somebody's labor of love, like, as a sculptor. Like, it's a model they've had in their head that they really want to do. Because it's so much work. So much sculpting. There we go. So now we've got our highlights and our shadows. We don't have our white highlight yet. But as we are moving up our yellows, we can really get a sense of the fact that this is starting to look gold. So that's what we want. When it starts to look a little bit shiny, a little bit correct, then we know we're on the right track. Yeah, big centerpiece stuff is what they do. Gotta separate yourself from the masses somehow, I guess. That's the other thing about this weekend with David's parents in town is I won't get any painting done. No work on the uh, halfling. So longer till I start the knoll, the knoll bust or the wolf lady. Little tiny bit of white to really pop that shine up. That was a little bit wide there for that highlight. 
I'm going to knock it back a little bit. On rounded surfaces, very small rounded surfaces like this, you really want that white highlight to be very tiny. So if you get it in there and it looks too big, knock it back. Grab one of your shadows and work with it. get our white highlights elsewhere so it didn't take much work to make the lamp look really good which is nice it's a hallmark of a well sculpted piece when you could put a simple paint job on it and it looks great gotta get that butt end there and so I have to move the model around so I can paint it comfortably. Kind of compare it to the other side. Yep. Okay. So there's a definite highlight there. A little bit too much purple. I'm trying to mix that brown color again. Because I want a little bit of contrast in here. I've lost a little bit of it. My white got a little bit strong. And that can happen in small areas. Your white highlight might come in and it is really big and you're just like oh noes then you just gotta take it back down and uh, bring it back up a little bit more controlled so does anybody have anything fun scheduled this weekend I'm going to be traipsing around the Bay Area, which is, you know, pretty fun. I'm just going to take the, get the back part of this little lamp done here. Oh, cleaning house. Well, that's nice of you. Cleaning can be fun, though. Because it's uh, it's rewarding, right? You can see the impact of what you do. D and D. Nephew's first burst band Sunday. That's cool. Paint on the brush. Lots of people painting this weekend. That's nice. Oh, nice, Coops. That's awesome. Yeah. I expect people's paint nights will start up again soon. That makes me excited. Yeah, California opened up, but a lot of people here are still, like, all wearing masks. I think it's, like, habit and feeling safe. I think it's that kind of thing. But... I don't know. I bring mine with me now, just in case, because I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. But in general, I've stopped wearing my mask. Unless I have to. But yeah, I can't wait to get a paint night again. Or paint day. What Paint whatever. Paint date.
once this weekend is passed, I'll start rabble rousing on the uh, Facebook group and with local people. All right, so now we can see that from the back, we need to carry our highlights around a little bit here. And probably want to carry it up on the side by the handle. It's actually not a bad idea. You know, whatever makes people happy. So sorry about that one off camera. I was just putting a little highlight on the butt end of that lamp by the handle. And I think that's pretty good. I want to bring in more color. The top is still kind of a mess, so let's deal with that. On the top, everything should be a little lighter. And once again, you're kind of accentuating shapes. Kind of want to keep an eye on what you've done to either side. Yeah, that's kind of me. I keep it in my pocket. If I go into a place that has a mandate, I put it on. It's fine with me. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. I'm going to take a stretch break in a second. just bringing up the top of this spout. And then I am going to put a little bit of a lighter highlight, kind of like I did over here where I just kind of bring it in around the um, lid to bring out that detail. I don't get that whole, I've never gotten that whole give people grief just because, you know, if somebody wants to wear a mask, let them wear a mask. It's no skin off you. Likewise, if, so, if you don't want to wear a mask, but somebody else wants to wear a mask, it's all good. People went through a lot in the last year and a half. I am uh, going to give all my fellow humans the benefit of the doubt for a while yet. It makes sense, I mean, outdoors, right? Because, I mean, the science pretty much shows that outdoors, especially if you're vaccinated, it's, like, so unlikely that you get stuff transmitted. But, again, it's what's your comfort level, right? It's all about everybody's comfort level. Do whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with is what you should do. And I don't think anybody should give anybody grief over it. It's all good. All right, there we go. So we've got a nice little shiny, shiny lamp. Shiny lamp. I could do a little bit more on the top if I wanted to, but it's not really a viewing angle. So it also looks good from there. I think I'll put a little bit more white toward the end. Oh yeah, totally. Yep, and you never know. You never know that about anybody that you meet. You know, if they if they're more susceptible or whatever, or they have relatives who are so, makes sense. 
All I ask is that people don't judge other people over it. That's what I... But, you know, humans love to judge. <laughs> we love it. We love to judge. Unjudge, everybody. Unjudge. There we go. Just bringing it in a little tighter on the top here. There. That's cool. I like that. Super. There we go, just gonna do a little bit of lining around these little fringes here. <laughs> Did you hear me talking earlier on about how I decided not to put the sword on her and that, you know, is kind of a DQ for the gallery online, but, uh, but yes, yeah, she'll come to you. So if you decide not to put her in the gallery, I've got a highlighter butt, because I know, I know, that butt's gotta be highlighted, but, uh, and the hair needs a little bit more too. But yes, she will, uh, she can totally be your desk mascot. I'm all cool with it. <laughs> yep, Ron's Ron's a butt man. In case you guys didn't know. <laughs> yes, we will highlight the butt. It'll be pink, cause you know. So yeah, how many years have I had this model, and you'll finally get it now, Ron? But but I have a whole Ron. I have a whole uh, <laughs> I have a whole box of stuff to give you. I was gonna mail it, but then I realized I really should just bring it to ReaperCon. So, it's just a whole bunch of the models I've been working on on stream. So you get presents. You get presents. Um, you get Grumpy Cat and Living Statue and a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of stuff. So, unless you want me to send it before ReaperCon because ReaperCon is just like a huge. Just bring it to ReaperCon. Okay, yeah, you'll get presents. So yeah, there'll be at least a half dozen, if not more. Depends on what uh, what all I finish before ReaperCon on the stream. But yes, you get Genie. So, I think she's turning out pretty well, actually. I'm pretty happy with her. So, like, should I tell Ron? Should I taunt Rhonda? Like, did Rhonda ever finish hers? Jackpot for Ron. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get closer and do this fringe. <laughs> she could sit next to the blinking light on his phone and that could help highlight her. <laughs> oh, man. Ron under the bus. Ron under the bus. You guys have learned. You've learned, like, the Reaper uh, the Reaper way. Are you learning that from Ed? <laughs> what is this, Crow's Nest? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, dear. Yeah, yeah. Well, this genie will at least get finished and we'll be, we'll get a home. And if she wants to sit next to the blinking light on Ron's phone, she can. You guys are harsh. Like, you could be Reaper employees with this, ta with this attitude. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. It, we, I, I emailed Cindy. Did Cindy tell you? I got, I got my actual address to her, so... Yeah, we moved, David moved when I moved in, because we needed a bigger place, so you should hopefully have the rest, uh, or the right uh, stuff. And awesome, because that'll let me uh, demo it on stream. I'm looking forward to it. David was just like, what's this weird package going to my old address? <laughs> yeah, Quindy is our MVP, our stream MVP. Now I know that you can give Ron crap with the best of them, Quindy. I mean, heck.
But yeah, I will look forward to it. See, now we can taunt everybody on stream with Anne gets the new Reaper Con paint early. Is Ron's, Ron's many offices. Oh, that's really weird because we got our ReaperCon stuff, Ron. Like last year. We got it at this address. So that's really odd. Fancy special. <laughs> yes. Ah, Ike. Michael and Jason. Yeah, well, they're great teachers on that one. Yeah, well, as long as it gets corrected and, and uh, then I get to play with paint and taunt people and get them to buy all sorts of ReaperCon paint, that, that works. Maybe um, if it gets to me in time, maybe I can start a brand new project with it because Jeannie here is almost done. And uh, uh, I, actually, I'm starting a new dude on Tuesday because Monday is my birthday, so I have it off. But Tuesday, we're starting the new dude, guide, guys, uh, because we finished uh, Chibi Monique. So for those of you who... those are, Hold on, let me get the new dude. New dude, where are you? We are painting... This guy. So if I get Reaper Comp paint in time, well, I, I probably won't get it in time to start him, though. But after I get Reaper Comp paint, we'll endeavor to start a new model on some day, uh, some of the day, one of the days, and we will use Reaper Comp paint. Yeah, I've liked him for a long time, so I'm just like, I can't wait to just do some painting on him. We haven't chosen a color scheme yet. Maybe I'll let people contribute. We need to have a fleshy pinky peach or something or purpley color in there somewhere, though, for the little worm on his staff. At the tips of his tentacles. Otherwise, I'm open. Yes, I'm probably not going to paint him crimson, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking at concept art, actually. I was like, I like to... Um, I kind of have in mind to do him with, like, greens and purples, kind of. But I don't know. He's pretty wicked, so we'll see. Maybe I'll let you guys chime in. There we are. That scarf is looking a lot nicer. All right. Yeah, it was nice to hear from you, Ron. Thanks for the update on the package. We'll keep our eyes open for it. We'll be running around, but we'll be here like all weekend and well, obviously all next week too. So we're not going anywhere. Thanks much. I'll bring all your presents to ReaperCon. Oh, I need to do a stretch real quick because we only have another 20 minutes before David and I have to I have to skedaddle right at 11 because we've got an appointment. Today is full of... This week has just been full of crap. I had to spend like two hours at the DMV this week also because I had to unravel problems with my title. So it was like... I felt like I like lost time all this week. It's really frustrating. I really like weeks where they don't have a lot of disruption where I can focus. Everybody likes that, I guess. There. Got our little little fringe going on here. I'm going to fi finish painting this last little part of the fringe, and then I'm going to, or highlighting, rather, and then I'm going to do my stretches. Yeah, keyword searches are problematic. You just, like, I, there's some times where I find, like, even the obvious choices aren't really in. But it takes time to type in all those keywords and to double check them and stuff, so. He looks like a necromancer. He's just cool design. And although I did book painting on my Patreon fairly recently, um,. He has a book, so I can do a book on stream as well. It'll be, we'll do it a little different, though, so it's... Both valuable content. All 
Alrighty, there we are. We've got the fringes of our scarf. This little doodad needs help. But I'm gonna do stretches and then we'll finish up the rest of the NMM and then she's like freaking so close to done. Pretty much we need, I think, um, I haven't done, I'm gonna try to block in the base at least. And then we'll have to do a stream where we just finish up the hair a little bit because it's just not quite there. And obviously, per Ron, we must highlight the butt. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do that because on stream, you know, stream stream model, I don't typically do a lot, a lot of work on them unless I'm really inspired like Snack Lady. But it's a pretty rare stream model that really makes me excited Let's see if I can get back out here so you guys can see her. We'll put her, uh, give her her pillow. Pillow. She's kind of angled. We, we, we're, we're crooked. We're all crooked today. I wonder if I can get her in frame if I zoom in. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, it's just going to go there. All right, you guys can stare at her while I do my stretches. Yep, so next genie stream is butt highlighting, finishing out the hair. We'll at least base coat the base. And she's got just little, little things. And that'll be touch-ups before I wrap her up to go to Ron in uh, September. Stretch, everybody, stretch! Everybody needs stretches. Ah, yay. Yeah, she's coming along. She's turning out well. I'll be happy with her when she's done. <laughs> yes, but stretches are a good start. Let's see what we can get done here before it's time for me to skedaddle. Hydrate, hydrate, caffeinate, whatever you're going to eat. I need my extra caffeination. This is a pretty good mug. It kept my tea hot all stream. Or at least at a drinkable level. It was hot for most of the stream. Now it's now it's just warm, but it's good. Alrighty. Yay. Alright, little genie. Let's get the rest of your gold done really quick and then... But yeah, you guys did such a good job of roasting Ron there. I'm, like, super proud of you. Like, this is a long-standing Reaper tradition there. You've proven yourselves to be Reaper fans. David just came in. He's probably... Wait, he's not working. I'm getting so many work pains. Oh, no. <laughs> David took the day off. 
so that we could get extra cleaning and things things doing done. And uh, yes, his work is pinging him because they have no respect, guys. Ron just popped into the chat, hun, and uh, said that the box that he sent was actually uh, preview samples of the Reapercon paint. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, somebody in my old apartment is going to be very excited about that. Well, <laughs> He's resending, so... We'll, we'll still get it. We just won't get it quite as quickly. I should actually text my old upstairs neighbor who is kind of interested in painting. Oh, and tell him to steal the box? Yeah, if he sees a box to me, he should try and steal it. Yeah, you should, actually. Just so it doesn't go to waste or somebody doesn't chuck it. Or it doesn't, like, sit on a doorstep forever. Although, I would assume they'd return it, but so much time, so many times they just don't. Like, if the address is okay... Even if the person isn't on the lease, they just uh, deliver it. Thanks, Jerris. Yeah, the blue here is highlighted with pink. And uh, also on the face, on all the skins. And then we've got the... This blue is really pretty blue um, that Reaper does. Call it, it's ultramarine blue. It's really, really pretty. I have a couple of blorfs I need to fix on it. Uh-oh. The backing up truck is here, guys. Up, oh, phew. That was close. I thought we were doomed there. And it's so late in the stream, I didn't want to close my window yet. Alright, so we're going to highlight a little bit on this. Up, oh, the BP truck is back. I spoke too soon. Is it the UPS truck? It's one of those. Sorry for the beeping. It will be it will be beeping of relatively short duration, so I'm just gonna leave my window open. Put some highlights on this little flower here to make all these little parts come out. Oh, it's black. I always do black. I have a um, I have a philosophy of always doing black on my bases, Pendrake. Either because I put it on a black base, you know, um, you know, or because I just like the look of a black base because it for me it's like a picture frame for the model. It like sends that same signal to my brain. It's kind of grounding. But yeah, I don't like ed I don't like edge colored bases like like colored bases edge that matches the terrain. Like I understand that it makes them blend in better on a gaming table, but since I'm painting almost exclusively display models, I really don't want that. Um, I want the model to be set off and to look clean. So that's why that's why I like the black base. And I always do the black base, like without exception. It bothers me if I can't have a black base. Uh, let's see here. Let's get some white on here. I think I'm totally sure it's like from being a 2D artist too. It's just like it really is like a frame for me. For me, it equates to that in my head. It's something that signals you that outside of this zone, you are returning to reality and you're no longer in the reality of the mini. It's just like a frame sets off a picture and tells you that outside of this is no longer this picture. This was concepted by uh, Reaper's concept artist, Jaris, um, Izzy Talon Collier. Uh, sh she does, uh, she likes putting animal patterns in things, so I'm sure she was thinking about air, since this is a djinn, so um, she decided to go not with the falcon or a hawk, which might be actually a little bit more traditional, but with an owl. I think it's cool and makes her distinct. Yes, the Greek genie would probably be stoppered in an M4. You're right. Let's 
mixing up some of my brown here so that I can make a little bit of shadow here. This needs a tiny bit of darker shadow. Yeah, concept art in the Bones 4 art book. There we go. Got that. Need this one. <laughs> Something else is on fire. Have fun, Nomad Zeke. We'll see you later. See you Tuesday. Remember, Monday I will not be here, y'all. I will be enjoying my birthday. I'm just going to put some spot white highlights on the jewelry here to really bring it out. It's a couple of owls. And I, while I'm here, if I missed some spot highlighting on some of the other parts here, I can bring in my white and bring that up. Make sure that everything looks shiny. <laughs> Thanks, Nomad Zeke. I'll hum the Final Fantasy uh, theme while I have my birthday. We're going out for tasty Japanese food at a new place that I've not tried before, so I'm excited. Although I think I might want ice cream for my birthday. I might have to uh, endeavor to find some ice cream. <laughs> yes, happy almost birthday. Yeah, you're right, Tilty Roll Pops, right? Are we still, we're still watching for the containers, huh? That's a bummer. Shipping is so screwed up right now. I forget which store. Oh, I was at REI. And they had just, like, signs all over the place going, there are shipping shortages, we apologize for the lack of selection, yada, yada, yada. So I was getting my new hiking boots, which are shiny. Shiny and have purple laces. Because me. That was a little bit too much there. Just trying to get up here into these. Touching up the yellow while I have all the yellows uh, mixed up. I think we're real close though here. A little bit of gold here on the shoulder pad. So I was informed today is National Sushi Day, David, so maybe that means I should get sushi for lunch. I have an excuse. I'm pretty... I have no idea why Izzy decided to go with owls on this one, Jarris. You'd have to ask Izzy. Probably just liked the idea of the design. I thought that owls were only like associated with death in certain cultures. Like, I don't think it's universal. Maybe I'm wrong there. They are nocturnal birds. Yeah, I was going to say, like, crow is also affiliated in some Native American cultures with the death and the crossing over instead of owl. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't remember in Norse mythology if anybody was associated with owls. Getting a little bit of highlighting in on this here. This shoulder pad comes out. I'm just doing some very simple highlighting on this one. There. And then we've got these little bits back here. Yep, David is here to tell me it is almost time for me to close the stream. We did not get to painting the base. We only finished highlighting all of our gold. Well, that was still accomplishments, though. So I guess we have at least one, maybe two episodes on the genie yet to come. Before we are completely finished with her. So maybe I will get the Reaper Com paint before I start my next model um, in her slot, which would be nice. There we go. Just a little bit of highlighting back there on those gold bits. Yep. 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 So start looking, Reaper, for somebody to raid. Since I'll be getting out of here shortly, but I first have to recap what we did today. As I'm adjusting little tiny bits uh, here and there. Oh, I need to line around those too. Thank you, Carrie Michael. Um, but yes, what we did today is we are mostly, we were mostly dealing with the, the teapot, AKA the lamp, um, on the genie's base. So since we had all those great gold colors mixed up already, I went ahead and finished up doing all of the other gold that I had neglected, which is always a nice thing. You know, if you've got the color out, you may as well use it to uh, finish up areas. I'm actually going to put a little bit of lining in here real quick. We were pretty good at staying on topic today. I will have to touch up her rump a bit but when we go back to highlight it. But let's zoom out and take a look at our genie who is like so close to done now. There she is with her resplendent little lamp and her gold in place. Fantastic. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for hanging around and being with us on the genie journey. Um, we will work on our new model, this dude, this necromancer dude, on Tuesday. As Monday, I am off work for my birthday. And yes, I will enjoy my weekend. I hope you guys also enjoy your weekends and have a great time. And I will see you again early next week. Have a great one, everybody. Boing.